Welcome to Agoracom CEO Interviews, in which we take the time to interview small cap CEOs and executives about their companies. With us today, Steve Rogosi. He's President, CEO, and Director of Garibaldi Resources. The company trades on the stock symbol GGI on the TSX Venture Exchange, and you can find him at GaribaldiResources.com. Now, what, for those of you who are new to the company, what you don't know is this. The company, uh, the company's discoveries and strategic developments of its assets in some of the most prolific mining regions of Mexico and British Columbia are impressive, and we're going to talk about those with Steve in a second. But on top of that, what's great about this company is they've got $3.2 million in working capital. Uh, that's per their latest financial, October 31st. That's due to a sale of some assets to Paramount Gold, and we'll talk about that with Steve. They've had no major financing since 2009 as a result of that, and yet they still got $3.2 million in capital. And uh, contrary to a lot of small cap juniors that had to finance and dilute, company share structure is still very respectable, very tight at 60 million, just under 60 million shares outstanding. Steve, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Thank you very much. First thing I want to talk about before we jump into the uh, into your projects here is the working capital. If you could expand the $3.2 million of working capital you have right now, expand on that because that's important at a time when a lot of juniors, despite the fact that things are starting to turn around for the quality companies, cash and working capital is still critical and you've got it. Tell us why you've got it. Well, we went, entered Mexico back in 2005 and uh, by 2008 uh, we'd accumulated something like 300,000 square Kilometer is a very uh, prospective ground around some of the larger discoveries made in Mexico, including a deposit uh, that uh, was originally discovered by uh, uh, Bolnisi, which ended up being uh, spun off into a company called Palmareo. The stock traded up to $10 a share and was subsequently taken out by Curtiline. Uh We control 50,000 hectares surrounding that deposit. Uh, also in the district was Paramount Gold and Silver. And so we got into a negotiation situation with both Curtiline and Paramount and uh, decided for the uh, best, uh, as far as the shareholders was concerned, it was the best interest of the shareholders that we uh, did a deal with Paramount where for 400,000 US and 6 million shares of uh, Paramount, uh, we sold the interest uh, in the, uh, uh, the Tamoris district. And so we haven't had to, uh, the deal was completed in 2009, we haven't had to uh, dilute the company, there's no overhang as far as our stock is concerned since 2009 and we still are in pretty decent shape uh, having come out of a very challenging uh, three year downturn in the markets uh, since uh, 2009. Um, I think that there, we're, we're well positioned, we kept our feet moving forward. The main thing here was is that even at the worst of the bottom of the market, we just kept moving our feet forward and keeping our projects, uh, advancing them and uh, uh, making sure that uh, the value that was being added to all of these projects that we have in Mexico, we still have uh, 50,000 hectares in three different uh, uh, states, uh, Chihuahua State, Sonora State uh, and down in Sinaloa. So we've got some very large projects down there that we've been advancing ever since and then recently we've also uh, made some discoveries up in British Columbia. And, so and that's that's what, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about in a second. I want to say one last point on that. In hindsight, that looks like an easy decision to make, but you know, back in 2009, that call took some guts, and a credit to you and your management team for uh, for making that call on the, on the Paramount sale. Well, we were able to negotiate that at the uh, pretty dismal time, bottom of the market. So, again, yeah, we were very uh, fortunate, and I think it was uh, kind of a, a feather in the cap of the management team to be able to uh, consummate that kind of a deal, and um, you know, or it's it's served uh, the shareholders very very well, and we've been we've been certainly uh, spending our money very very carefully, but always into the ground and keeping uh, everything uh, moving forward. Now, and let's go straight into that. Now, uh, you've got British Columbia, Mexico. I want to start with British Columbia. Northwestern British Columbia uh, has seen a bit of a staking rush going on there, uh, but you've been there for quite a while since 2006. We'll talk about that. You've got your grizzly property there that's in the Chesley Valley, and you back on uh, back on January 2000, January 31st of this year, you announced that you expanded it by nearly 50 percent. Why did you guys do that? What led? What, what's the data that led you to make that decision? Well, the uh, 
the Chesley Valley is in a, uh, a very prolific area of the Stikine Arch, uh, Golden Triangle, various uh, names. It's a thousand kilometer belt uh, in the uh, Ring of Fire that uh, goes all the way from down to Mexico to Chile. So we're this is a very prolific area. There's some major deposits that have been discovered up there. A lot of these uh, alkylic copper porphyry discoveries have been made in recent years. It's just uh, a, an area where the, the, its time has come. Uh, we felt very strongly back in 2006 that uh, this was an exceptional opportunity for our shareholders and we just kind of hung on to it and did enough work every year to keep it moving forward. Uh, it, you know, the neighboring property uh, was uh, had something like 20 holes drilled into it. All of them had uh, economic grade copper gold mineralization. So again, it, it wasn't so much a uh, we knew about this. It wasn't so much a no-brainer as it, it was. A, we just felt very, very strongly that uh, that area was going to have its day. And certainly, with the developments over the last year, you had the Red Chris going into production in Northwest BC, the Colorado find, uh, the Prosper Gold acquisition of the neighboring ground that I just discussed. Uh, with the, they, they've drilled another five holes there. All of them had economic grade copper globalization in it. So they're they're literally batting a thousand on the holes that have been drilled on this property. Um, it's a it's a cluster of copper porphyries that you know we've identified a 15 kilometer belt on our ground, uh, a corridor if you will, uh, running uh, northwest southeast, and that is uh, a, something that we're going to jump all over. We're not going to sit back and ride anyone's coattails. Uh, those guys are going to be the, the Prosper Gold uh, management team was actually the uh, uh, Richfield Ventures had discovered the Blackwater Gold deposit and these guys really know their, their stuff. They sold the uh, Blackwater deposit to New Gold for $500 million. They searched for three years and decided on the property uh, joining uh, Garibaldi's Grizzly pro project and uh, we're seeing clusters, the indications of clusters of porphyries. These things always come in clusters and it extends all the way down to uh, a most recent find uh, on our eastern flank, a small company called Doubleview, went in there and very courageously drilled uh, right up until the end of uh, November and they pulled a 300 meter hole of uh, 0.32 copper gold equivalent. It's just, I think, the fact that that particular, those holes were nine kilometers uh, uh, southeast of uh, Prosper shows you how pregnant this system is. And so we decided, even before those results came out, we're going to in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, we jumped all over it and uh, increased the, uh, the claim uh, position for Garibaldi and expanded the Grizzly uh, by 50%. And it was just in the nick of time because, uh, like, literally the next day, all the ground around us was, was gone. Uh, you know, we, we got in there and got some really ideal property right along strike. So we're very excited about the prospects for the upcoming season. You almost want to call. You almost want to rename Garibaldi preemptive because you guys picked up this project in 2006. You made the sale to uh, for the shares back in 2009. You staked another six and a half thousand hectares the day before everyone came up there and took more. So uh, hats off to your team. You're listen. You're a sponsor of Agoracom, but nonetheless, the facts that you're laying out uh, speak for themselves, and, and the quality management team that you got there. So let's let's jump right into the question. Then you hit the nail on the head. You say you're not going to ride in what's coattails. And you took the words out of my mouth because I was going to ask you, were you going to just ride the coattails and, and you know, let the rising tide there rise your boat as well? Obviously, you're not going to. Do you have any details about this aggressive 2014 exploration plan, or is that still being laid out right now? Uh, certain elements of it are being laid out. Uh, a bunch of people have approached us uh, about uh, how we're going to go about what we're going to do. We're working on a sequence uh, that uh, we're going to update the market on here fairly soon and I think that uh, there's no doubt that one option was not to sit back. Uh, we're, uh, you know, it's such a large land pack. We have tech on our southern border. Uh, they have, uh, we as a junior have the largest land package there now up to 260, over 260 square kilometers. Tech on our southern border uh, has uh, 600 square kilometers. So as a major, they're, uh, they're, they've got one big chunk of property there. Uh, you know, we've uh, certainly uh, been, uh, sharing some data uh, with the Prosper Gold guys and uh, there's no doubt that we want to get aggressive with this. Uh, these kind of opportunities, we see this as, uh, you know, potentially, it potentially could be a company maker because of the size and the nature of these deposits. 
I find it interesting though uh, that you talk about the collaboration going on between you and some of the other companies up there. That's that's new also, right? You don't often get that kind of collaboration. Well, it certainly makes sense in a, in that kind of an environment. Um, uh, we uh, we use the same uh, company. I introduced Prosper to uh, the uh, uh, the guys that flew our air mag, and uh, so you know it's certainly easier and more cost effective because what everything we're all about is is cost effectiveness uh, as far as the exploration costs are concerned and, and risk reward. So, you know, we're uh, we're certainly uh, open to uh, sharing costs on anything that's going to be done up in it. It's a fairly remote area, but there is a, a a road there, the old Golden Bear Mine Road, which is very fortunate. Power has been uh, extended up to the Red Chris, and so this whole area is just opening up, and its time has come. And, uh, well, great to hear. That's why we're going to have you back on here in the next couple months because it sounds like not only you, but a lot of your colleagues up there are going to be doing a ton of work. So uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of news flow coming out that entire area that's going to relate to you, whether it's directly your news or not. Well, I think we're looking at the emergence of a uh, you know a, a mining camp here that has potential world class uh, in that category. Anyway, so I, we're very very excited about what uh, what the Grizzly is going to mean for this company and our shareholders. And I did a little research, and for those of you out there who don't understand what a a, a large porphyry deposit means, if you look it up, actually it's quite complicated. But the one fact that I took out of there was that almost all mines exploiting large porphyry deposits are produced from open pits. Not to say that you have a mine or an open pit, but that's one of the great qualities of these porphyry deposits. Yeah, they're very, very large. They're very, very uh, cost effective. Uh, they certainly have a capex attached to them that is also significant. But uh, you know, we're an exploration company, and uh, with tech on your uh, on your doorstep, and uh, some of the larger players uh, all keeping their eye very closely on what's emerging here in the Chesley Valley, it's uh, it's a it's a very prolific area, and I think it's going to be a very, very exciting story. It could very well be uh, the big story in, uh, in the Canadian mining scene, never mind British Columbia. Well, let's hop down to Mexico there. Let's go straight down the coast all the way to Mexico. Uh, January 16th, you announced that uh, uh, you provide an update on the first ever diamond drill program at your La Patia gold property. Uh, tell us about that, because each of the holes there had cut, uh, quote, unquote, significant intervals of quartz uh, baiting similar to that which uh, you found in your channel sampling, which is a, some pretty big numbers. So, what what does that mean? What does that mean for uh, for Mexico for your Mexico initiative? Well, it's uh, La Petite is a uh, uh, epithermal target, a gold epithermal target. Uh, it's uh, it's it's early in the game. This is first pass drilling. Uh, we're we're very encouraged by the initial uh, results that uh, we that that led to uh, the decision to drill the deposit. Uh, we'll be updating the market as soon as we have results, which will be forthcoming soon. I, it's uh, certainly uh, the ground to the south of us is controlled by a small company uh, called La Trinidad, and that's being put into production. So we're again, we're, it's a fairly prolific uh, mining camp, and uh, the uh, uh, the Gambasinos have been mining uh, gold on on the La Patia property for quite some time. So. This is the first uh, ever diamond drill program on it, so we're uh, we're very hopeful that we're going to get some interesting results. Uh, La Patia is uh, one drill target amongst many that we've developed. As I said, we start off with 300,000 hectares down there. We're going to be down to 50,000 hectares after five years of uh, process of elimination, and uh, we're pretty much at the stage where what we have left uh, all have drill targets on them, so we'll have a pipeline here of projects that uh, hopefully will uh, be uh, uh, you know adding value to uh, the the company for the shareholders as we move forward in, in the next year to two years. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. Ask you one last question because uh, I always want to make sure I'm thinking the way shareholders might be thinking at home and investors might be thinking at home. Is uh, does Garibaldi have the resources and that means cash resources and personnel resources to be operating on both fronts? Or is, it, is, or is it fair to say that you're going to focus more on northwestern British Columbia for now and move move along Mexico? How do you how do you answer a question like that? Well, I think uh, if, uh, you've got two separate uh, areas here where, effectively speaking, uh, you know, uh, we built a foundation in Mexico. It's fairly cost effective to uh, operate down there for us. We own our own drill. Uh, it's a test drill. We're never going to drill off an ore body with it, but uh, it's very cost effective as far as per meter is concerned. 
And uh, we have numerous uh, pipeline of uh, drill targets. We're going to keep uh, testing these. And obviously, if we uh, come up with uh, something significant as far as drill results are concerned, then we'd, we'd, look at a, um, we'd look at bringing in a contractor. But the idea is to save the shareholders as much money as possible out of their treasury uh, by doing test drilling and then, uh, and then following that up before committing to a large dollar uh, value contract as far as drillers are concerned. But in uh, Mexico, uh, if, uh, if the weather isn't our friend up in northwest BC, we can keep working on the ground down in Mexico. We've got a lot of targets down there. Uh, fortunately, even in northwest BC, the climate where we're at is uh, in the Chesley Valley is very accommodative uh, considering the part of the world that we're in. Uh, the, a number of people have told us that you could drill there all year round. So we'll, we'll see how that all unfolds. Now as far as finances is concerned and resources, we certainly have uh, uh, the budget for the next uh, you know, uh, couple of years as far as exploration That's correct. is, is concerned. Correct. Uh, you know the people on the ground. I mean, you you don't you don't even get yourself into this position unless you have the right people in in place. Uh, we've been very very fortunate. Uh, you know, down in Mexico, uh, we've got Dr. Craig Gibson on our, uh, our board of directors. He's he's uh, runs Protomin. Uh, they've they've uh, drilled. They've been drilling off the uh, New Strikes Anapolo deposit for the last uh, three years. Uh, they've got two point something, two point two million ounces drilled off there. So this guy, Peter McGaw, uh, is on our advisory board. We're, some of the people that we are uh, have an association with and are directors of our company, uh, these guys are leaders in the, in the Mexican mining uh, field. So we're very, very happy. Uh, you don't get to anywhere without having the right people in place. We've got a very experienced management team, and I think uh, we're in the right place at the right time, both in Mexico and uh, Northwest British Columbia. So we're looking forward to uh, the challenge. Well, I'm going to end it there because that's a, a perfect amount of information to get everyone up to speed as to where you are in terms of your corporate finances, your projects in British Columbia, your projects in uh, in Mexico. And I want to tell you again, uh, you know, you and I aren't new to each other. I've known you for, for 15, 20 years now. And hats off to you and your team for navigating uh, this last four years in a way where you didn't go into zombie mode. Uh, you made some right strategic decisions from a financial resource point of view. You continued to move things along and just turn off the lights and, and hide. And, uh, and it seems like that's now starting to pay dividends to the company in terms of uh, your positioning there. And, and congratulations. Great job. And I can't wait to have you back on in the next 60 days and, and keep this moving forward. Okay. Well, thanks, George. Appreciate that. And uh, it's all about uh, keeping our feet uh, moving forward and, uh, and the Lake Boy Scouts being prepared. <laughs> You've been watching Steve Rogosi, the last Boy Scout. He's president, CEO, and director of Garibaldi Resources trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol GGI. You can find them on the web for more information at GaribaldiResources.com. And if you want to get together with other shareholders and have some discussions in a, in a moderate environment, you can always go to Agoracom as well, uh, where there's just some uh, free discussion between investors there exchanging ideas. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Steve, see you next time. In the meantime, have a great day.